In the previous episode, we witnessed Xiao Yun being ambushed by a horde of mutant beasts. As she lay there, helpless and injured, her hope fading, Yang Fan suddenly emerged to rescue her. Now, continuing the story. We observe Yang Fan holding Xiao Yun in his arms, telling her that they don't have time to listen to her apology. He instructs her to first put away the obtrusive things. As Yang Fan tosses Xiao Yun into the air, she lands on Xiao Ji's back. Xiao Ji reassures Xiao Yun not to be surprised, mentioning that she was also a member of Xing Ho. Meanwhile, Yang Fan finds himself surrounded by mutant beasts. He notices only four of them remaining and comments that he doesn't need to take action. At this moment, a man informs Yang Fan that he is going to die. He attempts to control the beasts to attack Yang Fan. However, before the beasts can reach Yang Fan, they are shot down. The man is shocked to see his beasts being attacked and questions the identity of the person hiding in the shadows. Suddenly, Mu emerges in front of the beasts, launching an attack that results in their demise. Fearing for his safety, the man attempts to escape while riding his beast. As he attempts to flee, Lu Zixi appears before the man. Lu Zixi inquires about the man's destination. The man charges toward Lu Zixi with his mutant beast, belittling Lu Zixi as a weak child and vowing to crush him. We witness Lu Zixi retrieving his phone and utilizing his miraculous ability, obliterating the beast the man was riding. As the man collapses onto the ground, he ponders why this turn of events occurred. He questions the swift defeat of his mutant beast army before Yang Fan and his friend. He realizes he must escape, acknowledging that lying there would result in his demise. However, he feels a sudden heaviness in his body, rendering him unable to move. Yang Fan positions his foot on the man's back and interrogates him about his motives for pursuing Xiao Yun. The man, amidst laughter, asks if revealing his reasons would guarantee his release. He sarcastically suggests that Yang Fan should just kill him, asserting that his superiors would eliminate Yang Fan and his friends regardless. Mu chimes in, proposing that if the man remains tight-lipped, they should execute him. Yen Yu readies her firearm, but Yang Fan intervenes, informing the man that if he discloses his intentions, Yang Fan will spare his life. This unexpected offer astonishes the man. Yang Fan continues, informing the man that killing him would bring about a lightning strike, leading to his demise. Upon hearing this, the man agrees to reveal his purpose to Yang Fan. He explains that the one who intended to capture Xiao Yun was one of the legendary Seven Great Envoys. The Envoy's objective was to locate a woman possessing the power of a sage. Upon learning this, Xiao Wan queries the man about why he was searching for Xiao Yun. The man responds that he doesn't possess extensive information, but he heard that a prominent individual in Haitian city had sustained serious injuries. Only a high-level sage with the power of life exchange could potentially save this individual. Upon processing this information, Yang Fan reflects that achieving the ability to learn life exchange requires reaching at least the sixth level of sage power. He acknowledges that the ability would involve draining the life force of another being and contemplates the resurgence of these nefarious actions. The man inquires if he can now leave, referring to Yang Fan's earlier promise to release him. Yang Fan agrees to honor the oath and allows the man to go free. As the man departs, he cryptically mentions that he will encounter Yang Fan and his friends in the future, believing that once he reports to his master, their demise will follow. However, before he can make his escape, Yan Yu shoots him in the back with a gun. The sudden attack leaves the man in shock, coughing up blood. Yang Fan reminds the man that he pledged not to kill him, yet Yan Yu's actions contradict this promise. Yan Yu justifies her lethal action by asserting that anyone who harms her people has forfeited the right to live. Utilizing his ability, Yang Fan creates a shadow soldier from the deceased man's body. Kaji humorously comments on the numerous attractive members of the Xingho team, which she believes explains why Yang Fan has shown no romantic interest in her. Yang Fan instructs Lu Zixi to tend to Xiao Yun's injuries. Lu Zixi expresses his commitment to healing her wounds and proceeds to administer several healing punches, causing Xiao Yun to wince in pain. Kajit catches Xiao Yun as she staggers, reassuring her that the pain will subside soon. Yin Yu inquires about the whereabouts of the others, and Xiao Yun, in a weakened state, conveys that the situation is dire. Xiao Yun guides Yang Fan and the group to a cave-like refuge where the others are stationed. She urges Yang Fan to enter and witness the situation inside. Upon entering, Yang Fan encounters Duan Muni, who appears in a distressing condition. Yang Fan questions how they came to be in such a state. 
Tearfully, Duan Moody embraces Yang Fan, explaining that they have been waiting anxiously for his arrival. Yang Fan reassures her that she is now safe. Seeing Duan Moody in this state, Yang Fan contemplates the events that must have transpired to emotionally shatter someone as composed as Duan Moody. As the others enter the cave, Yan Yu queries Duan Moody about the whereabouts of Qing Xue and the rest. Duan Moody expresses remorse for her emotional turmoil and explains that she struggled to control her feelings for a brief period. She informs Yan Yu that the others are situated deeper within the cave and offers to lead them there. Duan Muni proceeds to share their journey since parting ways with Yang Fan. She emphasizes their careful efforts to avoid drawing the attention of zombies while making their way to the destination marked on the map provided by Yang Fan. Duan Muni reveals that their journey remained calm and cautious until they passed by Haitian City. At that point, Miao Chuan displayed her sage ability by rescuing a child. This action inadvertently attracted trouble as a group of unfamiliar individuals began to pursue them. These attackers were persistent and appeared to be fixated on Lin and the group for undisclosed purposes. Duan Moody explains that initially, they managed to reach a temporary settlement with their pursuers. However, a mysterious and formidable man emerged. This individual possessed a potent toxic smoke or mist, rendering them incapacitated. They couldn't even glimpse the man's face before succumbing to his onslaught. At a crucial juncture, Xiao Wai intervened, using his own body to shield them from the toxic smoke, enabling them to resist its effects momentarily. Capitalizing on this opening, they managed to escape. Unfortunately, due to the exposure to the poisonous substance, Xiao Wai's condition is now critical. Even Miao Chuan's abilities were insufficient to save him. Witnessing this, Yang Fan praises Xiao Wai's loyalty and inquires with Lu Zixi about the possibility of saving him. Lu Zixi, however, informs Yang Fan that the affliction isn't caused by a physical toxin but is more akin to a curse or ailment. He explains that his miraculous abilities won't be effective against it. Understanding this, Yang Fan reflects on the formidable nature of the situation and realizes that Duan Mui's group encountered a highly problematic ability, possibly something stemming from the ultimate challenge. Suddenly, Yang Fan hears someone calling out for him. He spots his sister in a severely injured state, accompanied by other heavily injured members. The sight shocks everyone, and they remark on the severity of the situation, acknowledging that their adversaries are truly determined to eliminate them. Yang Fan approaches Qing Xue, who's unable to open her eyes, and inquires about her condition. Qing Xue replies that she has been waiting for him all this time. Embracing Yang Fan, she expresses how much she misses him and sadly reveals that she has lost her sight. This poignant moment moves Yang Fan to tears. Duan Moody attempts to take responsibility, blaming herself for not being strong enough to protect everyone. Yang Fan reassures them that it's not their fault, asserting that the true culprit is the one who harmed them. He issues commands to his team, directing Lu Zixi to swiftly treat the others, particularly prioritizing Lin and Miao Chuan's injuries. He instructs Qiu Ji to patrol the area and report any changes immediately. Yang Fan assigns Yan Yu and Zhu Xiaoyun the task of guarding the cave entrance to prevent any further intrusions. As everyone proceeds to carry out their assigned tasks, Yang Fan contemplates that the only way to save everyone is by helping Lin and Miao Chuan advance their abilities. He's determined not to let those who attacked his people go unpunished. Meanwhile, Miao Chuan gradually awakens. At first, she wonders if Yang Fan's presence is a hallucination due to her weakened state. Despite feeling too weak to move, Miao Chuan finds comfort when Yang Fan reassures her and even pinches her cheeks, dispelling her disbelief. She expresses astonishment at her dream becoming a reality and Yang Fan praises her efforts, explaining that he needs her assistance. Yang Fan inquires about her physical condition and whether she can withstand the task ahead. Miao Chuan explains that during their previous encounter, she expended her strength to protect the group and subsequently fainted, but she assures Yang Fan that she's prepared to follow his lead. He reveals his plan for her, advancing to the sixth level. Although Miao Chuan is currently only at the third level, Yang Fan emphasizes the importance of this progression in their quest to rescue their partners. He promises to guide her to the individuals responsible for their suffering and suggests harnessing their resources to facilitate her advancement. As Yang Fan draws nearer, Miao Chuan senses his breath, reinforcing the reality of his presence. He proposes that they work together to eliminate those who harmed their comrades. Miao Chuan agrees, expressing her desire for revenge on behalf of everyone. 
Yang Fan is pleased by her determination and discloses that Yao Zhixian has located their adversary's whereabouts, indicating that all that remains is to confront and defeat them. We observe a man perched atop a heap of garbage, engaging in conversation with two men on the ground. He questions the absence of an individual referred to as the ugly face guy. One of the men informs the man that the ugly guy went off to rob a woman again, dubbing him a pervert. The other man speculates that the ugly guy might have been fatally attacked, considering they are not the sole ones seeking the sage in Haitian city. The man seated on the garbage heap acknowledges the general dislike for their group and mentions interference by a tree spirit that hindered their efforts to capture the sage. The man on the ground tries to placate his boss, assuring him that they will eventually capture the woman. Another man asserts that they are the sole god's envoys involved in this matter and that other forces are not formidable opponents. Bolstered by this, the boss grows confident, claiming that even if other god's envoys confront him, they will be defeated. However, just as the boss boasts, Yang Fan appears before him on a block of ice. Yang Fan cautions the man against bragging and warns of potential consequences. The boss is astonished by the timing of Yang Fan's appearance, considering he had just mentioned God's envoys. As Yang Fan lands on the ground, he declares his intention to end the man's life. The man's minion dismisses Yang Fan's words as nonsense, asserting that Yang Fan doesn't stand a chance. Yet, Yang Fan responds by deeming them unworthy of speaking to him, further fueling their frustration. One of the minions highlights their level 6 status and boasts about their power, suggesting they can defeat even a divine envoy like Yang Fan. In a swift move, Yang Fan summons his shadow soldiers, including the ugly guy, who was once a minion of the man. This transformation of the ugly guy into a shadow shocks the minions. The ugly guy summons his mutant rhinos, which attack the minions. Yang Fan's shadow soldiers join the assault with lightning and a massive dark orb. The combined attacks create a colossal explosion, enveloped by a thick cloud of smoke. As the smoke dissipates, both minions are left severely injured and defeated on the ground. Yang Fan recalls his summoned forces and approaches the minions. One of them pleads in fear for Yang Fan not to kill him, but Yang Fan strikes the minion down with his ice sword. He justifies this act by emphasizing the suffering his partners and sister endured due to them. Observing this from the garbage mound, the boss of the minions watches on. Unbeknownst to him, Miao Chuan hides behind a pile of garbage, observing the scene unfold. Miao Chuan, who witnesses all of this unfold, is amazed at Yang Fan's remarkable growth in just six months. She reflects on the immense challenges he must have faced to attain this level of strength. She believes that with this newfound power, Xingho will finally be safe, and they won't be subjected to bullying any longer. Meanwhile, the man ponders whether Yang Fan is present to protect the sage rather than capture her, finding the situation intriguing. Yang Fan, revealing his ability, asserts that things will get even more intriguing. He launches ice shards toward the man, who counters by exhaling green smoke that forms a barrier, thwarting the ice attacks. The man acknowledges Yang Fan's strength but notes that divine envoys under the influence of the seeds have attained the seventh rank. He questions Yang Fan's intent to kill him, asserting that it won't be an easy task. Recognizing that his abnormal abilities won't be effective, Yang Fan contemplates using his original power. However, before he can do so, the man swiftly seizes Yang Fan's hand, cautioning him against impulsivity. He proposes that they join forces, suggesting that Haitian city is no ordinary place. Additionally, he emphasizes that if they unite, they can gather numerous talented individuals without competing against each other. Yang Fan remains silent as the man introduces himself as Ouyang Mingtai, revealing that he is a god similar to Yang Fan. Mingtai inquires if Yang Fan has encountered any other beings like them and explains his vision of a world dominated by gods. He proposes that Yang Fan hand over the sage, so they can share the benefits. Yang Fan questions whether Mingtai is the one seeking the sage's power, prompting Mingtai to call him a newcomer to Haitian city. He enlightens Yang Fan about the city's master offering a reward for the sage, a tier 8 potion. He explains that such potions are scarce, and most divine envoys only manage to reach tier 7 through the power of the seeds. This implies that Yang Fan could become the first superpower by attaining tier 8 and subsequently dominating the world. Upon hearing this, Yang Fan queries Mingtai's certainty that no traders possess potions above tier 7. He further asks where the Lord of Haitian City acquired the tier 8 potion. Mingtai acknowledges Yang Fan's astute question but expresses indifference toward the source of the tier 8 potion. 
He simply wants assurance that he can obtain the potion by exchanging someone unrelated to him. Mingtai informs Yang Fan that he is aware of the sage's physical attributes, mentioning her well-endowed figure and long legs. He adds that he has already inflicted harm on her, making her undesirable to Yang Fan. He reveals that there are a few more captives, one of whom he blinded, and the other remains unharmed. Mingtai taunts Yang Fan, suggesting that he can play with those captives first before receiving more attractive ones. Enraged by Mingtai's callous remarks, Yang Fan attacks with fire. Mingtai appears surprised and questions whether his offers aren't appealing. He queries whether Yang Fan intends to fight to the death. Yang Fan responds that he has one final question, how does Mingtai manage to blind someone? He deems it impossible to control such a fine mist effectively. Mingtai nonchalantly explains that he feigned injury, then blew the fog into the girl's eyes when she came to assist him. This revelation infuriates Yang Fan, who summons his entire army of shadow soldiers. Observing this from a distance, Miao Chuan wonders if this is Yang Fan's true strength. Yang Fan commands his shadow soldiers to attack Mingtai. The shadow soldiers charge toward him, and Mingtai expels fog from his mouth to shield himself. He attempts to age the shadow soldiers, asserting that he will turn them into decomposed corpses. However, when his ability proves ineffective against the shadows, Mingtai is left stunned. The shadow soldiers continue their assault, overwhelming Mingtai. Yang Fan informs Mingtai that shadows don't age, rendering Mingtai's ability useless against them. The relentless attacks from the shadow soldiers leave Mingtai struggling to defend himself, unable to counter their onslaught. What lies ahead for them as they venture into this mystical world? What do you think will happen next? Don't forget to hit the like button, comment if you want to continue this series and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching.